detecting the signs of the moment that indicates a coming megaquake. This is how the scientists have found this moment. Scientists find telling early moment that indicates a coming megaquake. Just 10 seconds into a quake, GPS data can detect signs of acceleration that point to an event's magnitude. This is from University of Oregon, dated May 29, 2019, on Science Daily. Scientists combining uh, data, the databases of earthquakes, since the early 1990s have discovered a possible defining moment 10 to 15 seconds into an event that could signal a magnitude 7 or larger megaquake. Scientists combing through the database of earthquakes since the early 1990s discovered the possible defining moment a few seconds into an event that could signal a magnitude 7 or larger megaquake. This is what we would consider a strong earthquake. Likewise, that moment gleaned from GPS data on the peak rate of acceleration of ground displacement can indicate a smaller event as well. GPS picks up an initial signal of movement along a fault similar to a seismometer detecting the smallest first moments of an earthquake. Such GPS-based information potentially could enhance the value of earthquake early warning systems such as the West Coast's Shake Alert said Diego Melgar, professor of Department of Earth Sciences at the University of Oregon. The physics-heavy analysis of two databases maintained by co-author Gavin P. Hayes of the U.S. Geological Survey's National Earthquake Information Center in Colorado detected a point in time where a newly initiated earthquake tensions into a slip pu pulse where mechanical properties point to magnitude. Melgar and Hayes also were able to identify similar trends in European and Chinese databases. Their study was detailed in the May 29 issue of the online journal Science Advances. Quote, to me, the surprise was that the pattern was so consistent, Melgar said. These databases are made different ways so it was really nice to see similar pattern, patterns across them." End quote. Overall, the databases contain data from more than 3,000 earthquakes, consistent indicators of displacement acceleration that surfaced between 10 to 20 seconds into events were seen for 12 major earthquakes occurring in 2013 to 2016. GPS monitors exist along many land-based faults, including at ground locations near the 620-mile-long Cascadia subduction zone off the U.S. Pacific Northwest coast, but their use is not yet common in real-time hazard monitoring. GPS data shows initial movement in centimeters, Melgar said. Quote, we can do a lot with GPS stations on land along the coasts of Oregon and Washington, but it comes with a delay, Melgar said. He adds, as an earthquake starts to move, it would take some time for information about the motion of the fault to reach coastal stations. That delay would impact when a warning could be issued. People on the coast would get no warning because they are in a blind zone, end quote. This delay, he added, would only be ameliorated by sensors on the seafloor to record, record this early acceleration behavior. Having these capabilities on the seafloor and monitoring data in real time, he said, could strengthen the accuracy of early warning systems. In 2016, Melgar, as a research scientist at Berkeley Seismological Laboratory in Berkeley, California, led a study published by Geophysical Research Letters that found real-time GPS data could provide an additional 20 minutes of warning of a possible tsunami. Japan already is laying fiber optic cables off its shores to boost its early warning capabilities, but such work is expensive and would be more so for installing the technology on the seafloor above the Cascadia fault zone, Melgar said. Melgar and Hayes came across the slip pulse timing while scouring USGS databases for components that they could code into simulations 
to forecast what a magnitude 9 rupture of the Cascadia subduction zone would look like. The subduction zone, which has not had a massive earthquake since 1700, is where the Juan de Fuca ocean plate dips under the North American continental plate. The fault stretches just offshore of northern Vancouver Island to Cape Mendocino in Northern California. Now, let's remember, again, I'm going to conclude with what happened recently. North Vancouver Island on July 3rd had a 6.2 magnitude uh, off uh, Bella Bella, Canada. And 13 hours later, we had the Ridgecrest 6.4 magnitude earthquake on July 4th in the morning and July 5th in the evening, about 8, 19 in the evening, we had the 7.1 magnitude at Ridgecrest. Now, this is not a coincidence that the Cascadia zone of 6.2 magnitude, which was a strong earthquake, hit in Ridgecrest. It's happened before in 2015, again, in the same exact zone north of Vancouver, in Canada, the Vancouver Island, 6.2 magnitude, again the same size magnitude, hit 24 hours later in Ridgecrest, California. The same Ridgecrest that we had, we're still having earthquake swarms at. So that is definitely a connection. Cascadia subduction zone hitting towards the east of the southern San Andreas Fault. And how does that happen? It's because it's the San Andreas Fault locked to the uh, Garlock, Garland Fault, which is horizontal to the San Andreas, pointing east towards Ridgecrest. Ridgecrest is where we have the Walker Lane Fault System that has not been mentioned whatsoever by geologists yet. It's not one fault, it's a series of faults that is um, positioned there at the Garland Fault, locked in with that, which as we said is zipped in, locked in with San Andreas to the west just off Los Angeles. The Walker Lane Fault System goes all the way up to the Cascadia Arc, arcing and pushing up towards the Cascadia Arc, which of course has its, its effect on Vancouver. So Van the pressure for Vancouver quakes hit in Ridgecrest because that whole thing is like an elongated tub, an oval, which is all locked up. And it... Uh, the Walker Lane Fault System is a very strong system. They say that once San Andreas hits with a major earthquake and California sinks into the sea, major, the Walker Lane Fault System will be the end, the edge of the new coastline of, the, uh, of America, of the North American plate. So, um, as we see, they, have, they can have a 20, GPS data could provide a 20 minute warning for a tsunami. Now the Cascadia area, uh, the uh, northwest, the west coast, the northern part of the west coast has had a major nine magnitude quake in 1700s that caused a ghost tsunami that hit Japan. That was over 300 years ago. From sediment examinations, the USGS has found that Every 300 years, a major 9-magnitude quake hits that area. So this is overdue for a major quake there. We're talking about the northern part of the San Andreas. We're also overdue for a, a major quake in the southern part of the San Andreas, around Los Angeles. And the same thing is uh, also in effect for the middle part of the San Andreas, uh, which also is uh, has, for some very strange reason, has not had earthquakes. And uh, the geologists are very pensive as to why all of this seems to be acting together and that it's very quiet as far as strong earthquakes are concerned. There should have been more strong earthquakes than have taken place and they have come to the understanding that all of these things are now working together and for some odd reason they are very quiet. They have a, an earthquake um, hiatus for some reason. And uh, the Ridgecrest earthquakes have in no way lessened the south part of the San Andreas Fault from hitting. That 
warning of a major earthquake to hit the Los Angeles area, the southern part of San Andreas, is still in effect. I'll leave links below for you for this on Science Daily. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.